If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you have a daughter and you're looking for some help on what she needs from you to thrive. The truth is, our girls face a lot of challenges in our culture today. And not only do they have the normal pressures of growing up that every generation has had to deal with, but now social media is always clamoring for their attention and giving people access to their lives in ways we might not like. On top of that, mental health issues like anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts have all increased dramatically since the pandemic. And sometimes as parents, it can be confusing how to help them navigate this new world. As a dad of three teenage daughters, I wanna help my girls thrive. But I have to admit, sometimes I feel scared and uncertain about what to do. Anybody with me? A number of years ago, I remember wanting to get ahead of the game, so I started asking dads I respected what they did to help their daughters through the teen years. One dad's advice in particular stuck out to me. He said, oh, that's easy. Every morning I get up really early before everyone else, I leave the house, and I come back just in time for dinner. Then I just try to stay to myself until everybody goes to bed. And this is my friend's lighthearted way of saying that there is no formula to being a great dad. And while it might seem easier to avoid our daughter's problems or disengage from their distress, our girls need more from us as parents to help them thrive, which starts by us being willing to show up and love them the best we can. And just an encouraging word to other dads out there, there may be no more important job you have in this world than learning to be a great dad to your girls. While there are a lot of other people that could probably do your day job, no one else has called you to be the dad God has called you to be. So in this short video, I wanna highlight a few practical things your girls need from you to thrive. And to help you remember it, we're gonna follow a cheesy acrostic that I'll see if you can figure out along the way. And the first thing that they need from you is pretty simple. It's for you to go to God first. The really good news is that God wants your girls to thrive more than you do. Throughout the Bible, we find that God is a good father that wants to give good gifts to his kids. He loves us, he delights in us, he corrects us when we go off course, and he gives us strength to face our problems. In Matthew 6, Jesus famously promises that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his ways, everything we need will be given to us. And that applies to us as parents. No matter how messed up of a family you've come from or how many times you've messed up as a parent, God loves you and wants to help you learn to give good gifts to your girls. And the best gift you can give them is letting God change your heart of seeking him first. You can't give to your girls what you don't have yourself. As you set an example of turning to God to trust him with your fears, to admit your mistakes, to look to his word for wisdom and guidance, you can help your girls learn where to turn to learn how to thrive. And that leads us to the second thing. They need you to invest in their identity. Your daughters need you to help them see that they have an identity in Christ that is far more valuable than anything this world has to offer them. Your daughters are not an accident. The Bible says God dreamed them up before they were born and they are fearfully and wonderfully made. As parents, it can be so easy to get trapped into just investing in their interests, going from one activity to the next that we forget the opportunities we have to build into their identity, to speak the truth about what God says about them into their life. Especially in our social media driven world when girls are so tempted to compare themselves to others, don't underestimate the importance of your voice in their life, even if they don't seem like they wanna hear it. Your girls need you to see them the way God sees them and to speak consistent words of encouragement and affirmation into their life. And the more specific and personal, the better. The more you can write notes, letters, send texts or Snapchats about the unique things you see in their character, their personality and passions as you go through life, the more they will begin to connect the dots to finding who God has truly made them to be. And the next thing your daughters need from you is to remain relational. Just like it can be easy to get trapped into going to the next activity on their calendar, it can be so easy to get focused on just correcting their bad behavior, especially when there's a lot of it. You gotta remember the kid is more important than the dishes that weren't put away, that attitude that is defiant or the cure for you that is broken, but it can be so easy to forget. While setting rules, boundaries, and consequences that are appropriate to their age is also an important part of your role as a parent. Your daughters need to know that your relationship with them is more important than the rules. As they get older, they need you to help them learn how to think about things like social media and use it in a healthy way so they are more prepared to thrive in a world when they leave your home. They might not like all of your rules or limits, but they need to know you love and respect them. 
Get to know them, be curious about them, ask them about their friends, challenges, and fears, and find ways to connect with them that brings them joy. When your daughters are known and loved for who they are by you, you give them a greater sense of security to face the struggles of their world. And real practically, your girls need you to listen to them, to empathize with them, especially as they get older. Your teen daughter needs you to see things through their eyes and connect with what they are experiencing. They need you to ask good questions and then listen and not freak out even if you don't like what you hear. And I have to admit, as a dad, this can be challenging. Sometimes I can just want to fix their problems or their bad feelings rather than truly listen. I've had to learn the hard way by messing it up a lot that to love my daughters means I need to connect with them more than I correct them. And finally, your girls need you to set rhythms and boundaries that help them establish good priorities. And there's no formula to this. What works for one family might not work for another. And what works when your girls are younger probably won't work when they are older. For instance, in our house, when our girls were younger, one thing that worked really well was developing a routine before school and before bed that was practical and spiritual. In the morning, we set a time for us to eat breakfast and take turns reading a simple devotional together. A different person would read it every day and then everyone would share one thing they liked about it before we prayed for our day. And at night, we would spend 10 minutes with each kid reading a story, talking and praying together, but it didn't drag on and on. Everyone knew what to expect. It was a really simple routine that worked for us and helped our girls learn to listen to God and each other and have fun with it. But then as they got older, their schedules changed and their needs changed, so we needed to adjust. Instead of putting them to bed early and having time to watch Netflix together as a couple, we need to be more available now when they want to talk at night. Now dinner is a phone-free zone where we can share highs and lows together. Car rides are chances to process things that are going on in their life. And we've tried to set up our home to be a place of hospitality that they want to invite their friends. Your daughters need you to create rhythms, routines, and boundaries that work for your family and serve them well. And that takes a lot of thought, prayer, and effort. There's no perfect way to do it. Take the pressure off yourself to get it all right. There's only one perfect parent and one savior of your kids, and you aren't him. As you do your best to go to God first and stay close to him, to invest in your girl's identity, to remain relational and listen empathetically and set rhythms and routines that serve your family, you can't guarantee how your girls will turn out, but you will have given them the best foundation you can to help them thrive.